Hi Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here, and today I've got uh, what is really a feature length film next to my usual three or four minute videos. Uh, we're going to hit pretty close to the 15 minute limit on this one, I think. It's really a thank you for making our 7th anniversary celebration such a huge success out of TBA. And this one's really primarily for you CCNP route and T-shoot fans, and we're going to be on the live equipment here in just about half a minute. You might want to grab something to write with really quick and jot down a couple of network numbers. And let me go ahead and bring those up as we get ready to start the lab up. And we're going to work with BGP here. We've got a couple of different BGP concepts we've got to be aware of in this lab. I know in the exam there seem to be hundreds. But you're going to see a couple of really important ones here today. And we're going to follow a BGP route around the network, do a little bit of troubleshooting, and then, of course, determine when we don't need to do some troubleshooting. So here are the network numbers. We've got a frame relay segment. We've got an Ethernet segment. BGP has been configured and no additional protocols are running. Just a really good tip here for the route and T-shoot exams. Don't assume that another protocol is running unless they tell you it's running, especially with BGP. And let me show you why, actually, I say that in particular. Let me go bring that over a little bit. So we've got three routers in AS1235, routers 1, 2, and 3. They're connected by that frame network I mentioned a moment ago. And as always, the last octet of the IP address will be the router's number. Routers 2, 3, and 4 also share a common Ethernet segment. And let's see what else we've got here. We've got some BGP connections we better know about, some BGP neighbor relationships. Notice that we do not have a full mesh in AS1235. What we've got is relationships or adjacencies between routers 1 and 2 and routers 1 and 3 but we don't have one between routers 2 and 3. So don't just glance at a diagram on the exam, make the assumption, you know, well, wherever there's a frame connection, we're going to have a full BGP mesh, because in this case, we do not have one. The route that we're going to follow around the network is on router 4 right now, and it's a loopback network, the all fours network. And let's go ahead and bring the live equipment up, and we'll dive right in. We're on router 4. So let's run a show IP BGP. We see that one route, and the next top of all zeros always indicates that that route is locally originated. That's all it means. So we knew that from the diagram and from the discussion, but just want to mention that for your troubleshooting toolbox. Now, we've got the asterisk and the arrowhead, as I call it, because the route has to be valid and best for it to be good in BGP. So everything's fine here. Now, let me ask you a question. When we head down to router 3 from here, do you think that route will be valid and best that it's getting from router 4? Let's take a look and find out. The joy of live equipment. We'll find out. It looks like it does. It's valid and best. Notice the next hop has changed. This is router 4's Ethernet interface. And since that next hop is known to router 3, since it's directly connected to the same subnet, then the next hop is not an issue, and it is valid at best. So, so far, so good. Now, we want the other routers in the AS to know about this route. So, if we go around logically, we'd go to router 1 next to see if router 1 has that route. Now, is router 1 even going to have that route? Is it going to be valid at best? What do you think? What do you think the issue might be there? Let's go ahead and head back for the rack. Head back for the rack, that is. Let's go up to router 1 and find out. Okay, well, at first glance, everything looks fine because the route is marked valid and it's got a next top of 172.23.23.4. Everything looks okay, but this is not good enough. It can't just be valid in BGP. It's got to be valid and best. Let me show you a really helpful command that help you spot issues like that. You can follow show IP BGP with the route itself. And you can see one available path, no best path, not advertised to any peer. Well, we're not really worried about that because we're trying to get the route in this table to begin with. But notice the next top IP address, 173.23.23.4, is inaccessible. Router 1 doesn't know where that route is if we're not running a dynamic routing protocol or we don't put a static route in there. So, you know, a static route would be one solution, but one, another one that I want to introduce you to has a little bit of a side effect to it that I want you to see on live equipment is the next hop self command. 
we're going to go down to router 3 and tell it to announce itself to router 1 as the next hop for any routes that, it, that are sent over to router 1. And it starts with the neighbor command, as most of our 10,000 BGP commands do, right? And the one we want is right here in the middle, next hop self. And we're actually disabling the next hop calculation for this neighbor. It's a pretty dramatic way of putting it, but that is what we're doing. And believe it or not, there are no options. So we'll hit enter. And we'll go from there. We don't see anything happening with the adjacencies, which is good. Something just blinked here, but that's fine. And now, check this out. The next top address has been changed. It's been changed to 172.12.123.3, which is router 3. And router 3, router 3 is telling router 1, hey, I'm the next top address for any routes that I'm sending you. So now that router 1 is getting the advertisement and knows where that next top IP address is, it's marking the route as valid and best. And we'll go with show IP BGP 444 again, and you can see now one available best number one. So it is now a valid and best route. You also see that difference down here at the bottom. I should have pointed that out where it says valid and best now. And previously it said just valid. So it's really easy to overlook that. You see the word valid. First off, you see the route in the table to begin with. And you say, okay, we're fine because with OSPF and RIP and EIGRP, all those protocols, once you see it in the table, you're fine. But with BGP, just because you see it in the table, it doesn't mean it's okay. It's got to be, as you know, valid and best. So do we have any other issues here? What do you think is going to happen here now with router 2? Because router 2 is going to have to hear about that route from router 1 because we have no BGP neighbor relationship between routers 2 and 3. So that wouldn't really seem to be much of a problem, right? Well, there's one phrase that you've probably already caught on to right here that could be a problem. Not advertised to any peer. That sounds pretty harsh, too. Let's go down to router 2. And we run show IP BGP, and we get the dreaded nothing. So, of course, first I would make sure that the neighbor relationship was there. I could have run neighbor there and gotten a lot more information than this, but I like to use summary here, show IP BGP summary. Well, the neighbor relationship is fine, so why isn't router 1 advertising that route to router 2? What's, what's the problem? The problem is, is that we've got IBGP peers here, internal BGP peers, and the rule, follow along, because it's a little tricky the first time here. The rule with this is that a, an IBGP router is not going to advertise a route to another IBGP neighbor that it learned from another IBGP neighbor. Make sense? So in this case, router 1 is getting a route from one internal neighbor, router 3. By rule, router 1 cannot then advertise that same route to other internal peers. I think it's better when you say it that way and just leave the BGP out of it all those times. So let's go over that one more time. Very important rule here. Router 1 or any BGP router, if it gets a route from an internal peer, it cannot by default advertise that route to another internal peer. So that's why we're not seeing this on router 2 right now. So obviously that's a big issue, and we've got to know how to combat that. Now we're not going to use next hop self to do this. What we can do in this situation is configure router 1 as a route reflector. And notice I said we're configuring router 1 as a route reflector. The great thing about route reflectors is that you don't have to go to each of what we call the route reflector clients and configure them as clients. You're going to do all the configuring on the route reflector itself. Okay, So let's go back to router 1 and put this into action and see what happens. And we're still using the neighbor command here. We'll make that 2 this time. And what we want here is the route reflector client command. Notice there is no command that's just called route reflector. And that may seem a little odd to you at first, just something you have to get used to. 
when you want to configure a neighbor as the route reflector client, you actually go to the route reflector itself to do so. The client doesn't even know this is going on. And there we go. And there's a little side effect we ought to know about. Notice that the, the adjacency dropped. Now we're going to sit right here until it comes back, but notice it even says down RR client config change, which means you made this into a route reflector client. If you then removed this route reflector command, the adjacency would go down again. So we're going to hang around right here until that comes back up, which I hope is soon. But notice with next hop self, we didn't lose any adjacencies, but with route reflector we did. So the relationship is back up now, and let's go to router 2 and see what we see. And there it is. The next hop remains the same, and that was, that was not the issue here, because router 2 had an interface on the 172.12.123.0 network. So it wasn't a next hop issue at router 2 like it was at router 1. It's a different issue, and that is the internal route advertising issue. And you can see now router 2 has a valid and best route to 4444 because of the route reflector. Pretty cool stuff there. So let's, let's review a little of that because there's a lot going on there in a couple different scenarios we needed to know about. Router 3 was getting the route perfectly fine. That was not an issue. But router 1 was having a problem putting that route into the table because it didn't have an entry in its own routing table for router 4's address. Remember the next hop, the Ethernet segment. So we had to get router 3 to tell router 1, hey, I'm the next hop from now on. Don't worry about it. So then, and I want to run those commands for you again. This is good stuff to review. Show IP BGP is going to give us our routes. You saw the next hop change. And let me show you, show IB, IP BGP neighbor. Neil's going to trip over that sooner or later. Nothing wrong with this command to check your adjacencies, but you do get a lot more information. And it's going to show your state right there, established, which is always good. And this is very handy. It's also going to say how long it's been up for. So if you're getting some information, say, from another admin that says, hey, you know, this has been up and it hasn't been down for, you know, 32 hours or anything like that, and you run that and it's a minute and a half, then you know you got a problem. Because it also shows you what the last reset was for each of your neighbors, when it was, and why. So you really can't beat that at all. But if you just want to quickly check whether you have the adjacency or not, show IBP BGP summary is a fantastic way to check your adjacencies. So then we simply had the internal route advertisement issue, and we just made router 1 a route reflector. We know now that you don't touch the client, just touch the reflector. That's the only one you've got to configure. And also, you will lose your adjacencies when you configure a route reflector. So I hope you enjoy today's longer video. Let me bring up another screen for you. I just want to give you one more exam tip. Hang in there with me on this, especially for you working on BGP, which obviously you are. And for those of you who are just getting started with it, I know it looks like a monster at the beginning. I mean, it intimidated me when I first looked at it, and I do not intimidate easily with any of this stuff. But I was just like, holy crap, look at all this stuff. And it's just totally different than anything you've looked at before. But just take it one concept at a time, one attribute at a time. You know what I'm talking about? We've got plenty of free resources over on the TBA website on the uh, route and t-shoot resource pages to help you get this stuff straight, help you pass the exam. Just take it one piece at a time with BGP and you'll be fine. Thanks for watching today's video and for making TBA part of your CCNP success story.